I'm really, really pleased to actually have Bart um, being our final guest speaker. And I wanted to actually have Bart talk a little bit about actually basically his trajectory, his understanding, and also his PhD research work around basically circular economies and the importance also of measurement. Yeah, to actually measure something means that you can actually change that later on. It gives you deeper context. And that's actually exactly what Bart has been teaching, um, uh, where he's actually doing his research on. And um, I'm very delighted to welcome you, Bart, to the class and to present. Awesome. Well, thank you for your invitation, Aiko. And I hear it's an uh, up, uh, up tempo class, so I'll try to follow up at the same speed. I come from Delft University, and from there, I started up a company about floating architecture, basically, because I'm an architect and building engineer. And from there on, I set up another company or two different other, three different companies in total. And uh, I went to Taiwan for seven years, teaching courses even very similar to this. The title of my PhD is called Towards a More Universal and Comprehensive Assessment Framework to Accelerate Circular Economy in Region. It's basically about what is circular economy, how do we measure it, and how do we improve it? And I do this in regions. And a region can be Melbourne, can be Australia, uh, but also even the whole planet. So I like to call myself a save the planet guy. Um, some other people translate it to environmentalist because um, I'm quite passionate about this planet we're living on because I mean, we're living on it. And for this uh, 21st century, we have a couple of challenges, uh, which I will name three of them here. First one is urbanization. Never before there have been people living so many on this planet. And since recently, half of them are living in cities. And the urbanization process is even increasing and increasing, increasing. And I believe cities, um, you could use the metaphor, it's a parasite or there are parasites on the planet because they drain or suck the life out of it. Combined with that is the other issue of, of climate change. It's not the polar bear losing its habitat, but I believe mostly any, any animal or creature alive on this planet. And uh, the third challenge is how we are uh, using our resources and we should start reusing our resources better. And it's not just about the depletion of oil, but about any resource we having on this planet. Why? Well, our planet is going to get a bit of a hothouse. Heike already talked about uh, climate change. Uh, I even use uh, nine different planetary boundaries where of climate change is just one of them. Um, but the way we're dealing with our planet currently, we're not making it a better place. Definitely not. And uh, how this is going to be for the future generations. And um, I guess you can call yourself a future generation yourself. This is the generation we're going to experience the pain from our parents and, and their ancestors while they left a mess on this beautiful blue planet. So um, I'll start briefly introducing how we're using our planet to just get an understanding of what we're doing. Then I switch over to what is circular economy. And then we, we discuss a few uh, business cases and I'll try to pick up business cases I've been working on myself. If certain things are already very much covered, uh, I hope that Heiko will say like, hey Bart, uh, <laughs> speed up this part because uh, I have plenty of slides. So uh, I can speed up parts which are very well understood already. So yeah, this is our planet. And in our history in the last two centuries, this is the population growth. And after the Industrial Revolution, it's been uh, increasing exponentially. And we're not sure how population growth will happen in the nearby future. Um, but the three scenarios from the United Nations are, are, I think the three of them are quite terrifying. Imagine we just continue business as usual, reproducing and, and doubling our population on the planet again. Uh, maybe we're stabilizing eventually, but how soon? Or we're gonna get a population decline uh, which is healthy for the planet, but I would question how do we get a decline? Where does the decline come from, if you know what I mean? We have questions? Oh, that's just high <laughs> Great. All right, so um, besides our population growth, we also are using more resources per capita, per person, which is our energy usage per person has been doubling over the, uh, I don't know, 50 years or something, or what our footprint per person has been doubling, space footprint per person, material footprint per person and also the pollution we make per person. So it's an exponential thing on top of the exponential growth of population growth. The, the research uses has also been growing per person. Uh, here's some graphs to sort of roughly show that it's all going up. Well, no surprise. 
And uh, this has a pressure on our planet. Every resource, every process, everything we do uh, impacts our environment. Uh, and a lot of them negatively, right? Well, the good thing is uh, Earth can regrow its resources um, or, or, or clean them up again. And um, nature has been doing this forever. But the question is, uh, um, if you look at this, if, if a planet in one year can regrow or regenerate so much resources, uh, can it regenerate enough of all the mess we're making? Well, according to, I forgot my resource here, my source. Well, it's a, a, a carbon footprint network. They calculate um, how many planets we need to regrow and restore all the resources we've been using. And currently we're using 1.7 planets per year. Well, you're good enough in mathematics to know we only have one planet, right? So we're 0.7 planets over our capacity the planets can regrow. It's like having a debt at the bank of 70% of your yearly income. It's, it's a massive debt we're having at our planets. And our continuous efforts are going to make our debt bigger. In 2030, it's expected that we're using the amount of resources equal to two planets. So we're having 100% debt of a yearly income at the bank. Bank is here, modern nature. Of course, this is not a sustainable thing. And um, if you want to be happy when you're 50, this is not a sustainable way. Obviously not. Uh, what's going to happen? Bank, modern nature is going to say, screw you. I'm not going to give you anything anymore. And then all the natural resources we as a society depend on may collapse and stop. And it's happening with biodiversity. It's happening with, with most processes uh, currently on the planet. Um, this is a nice picture of the Great Barrier Reef in color. In 2050, this is the color you're going to see, plastic bags. Because the coral reefs are bleaching, they faint out in color, and uh, the plastic is uh, replacing the fish. Uh, it's expected by, that by 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. How sickening is that? Right, and, and sickening is, is quite literally, because <laughs> we eat fish, and if that fish is polluted with plastic, we eat plastic, you know, and that's that's uh, that's a circle is round because we put the plastic there in the first case. So I would say it's time to think of our planet as a spaceship with a limited amount of resources and with a large population in this spaceship. So we better start to think how we're using this uh, this uh, spaceship run. This is not a new thing. Uh, your parents, or maybe even your grandparents, should have heard about Buckminster Fuller uh, already. He published a book, Spaceship Earth, uh, in 1968 already. And um, he was quickly followed up by uh, Garrett Hardin, um, Tragedy of the Commons. The problem here that we have a planet is common goods, uh, but nobody takes individual responsibility for it. And if we flash forward to the more uh, near present, in 2006, Al Gore, almost president of the US, published a, a movie, because we like movies better than, uh, than papers. <laughs> uh, he, he published a movie called An Inconvenient Truth um, about the, well, the, the issues we're getting to. And uh, in a more positive note, in 2002, William MacDonald uh, started up uh, a movement called Cradle to Cradle. And even much more recent, uh, Ellen MacArthur introduced uh, the concept of circular economy, um, and where circular economy and Cradle to Cradle are solutions to watch this problem. Like how can we um, deal with the, the, the process of how we're uh, having an economy uh, like cannibals with forks eating our planet? 